In this talk, I will talk about uh, cosmology with massive neutrinos. I am Jalio from University of California, Berkeley. Uh, this is the motivation for my work on massive neutrinos. In the standard model of uh, particle physics, if we look at all the fermion masses, the, their masses are arranged in this way. You can see uh, all other fermions are clustered in this region from TV uh, to MEV, but neutrinos are clustered around sub EV range. So there's uh, six orders of magnitude differences between these two clusters. And the, that prompts the question, what is the mass generation mechanism for the neutrinos? So from particle experiment and cosmology, we can already have some answer. From current ex uh, experiment, uh, we can get 1.1 EV from the Katrin experiment. From the cosmology side, the current constraint, best constraint is from the Planck satellite uh, combined with several ground-based experiment and we have an upper limit of 0.12 EV. So these two numbers, uh, if you compare them, you can see that cosmology has a constraint that is one order of magnitude better than particle experiment. In the next decade, we expect improvement on both fronts. From particle experiment, the Katrin experiment is uh, keep taking data until 2023. And the expected sensitivity from Katrin will be 0.2 EV, which is order of magnitude improvement from the current constraint from the same experiment. Um, for cosmology, the future sensitivity is expected to reach around 0.03 EV combining via Rubin Observatory LSST, Simons Observatory, which is a CMB experiment, CMBS4 and DESI. And 0.03 EV is already lower than the minimum neutrino mass, 0.06 EV. So this mass is obtained from oscillation experiment. So that means in the next 10 years, we're likely to have a very good hint of neutrino mass or we, we may even discover the neutrino mass. What is the signature of massive neutrinos on uh, cosmology? If we look at the matter power spectrum um, on the right, left hand side, different colors are neutrinos of different masses while holding all other um, parameters constant. On the very large scale, you see that varying neutrino mass has very little impact on the matter power spectrum. But on very small scale, when you vary, you see differences. And if we, we look at the ratio plot, it's more clear on the right-hand side. The level of suppression is proportional to the mass of neutrinos. The higher the neutrino masses are, uh, the larger the suppressions we see in the matter power spectrum. In order to model neutrino masses accurately, people can take different approaches. On very large scales, cosmic scales, we can use linear theory because things evolve linearly. We can keep um, the first order terms in our equation and uh, derive uh, the result analytically. On mildly nonlinear regime, um, we can use perturbation theory by keeping high order terms and they get an analytical solution. But on very small scales, galactic scales, everything is highly nonlinear and the numerical simulations is the only way to model neutrino effect or uh, nonlinear growth. So to study neutrino effect, we realized that it is the strongest on this nonlinear regime. So numerical simulations is a great tool to study them. So the results of my talk will be based on uh, a set of simulations, massive news, 
Um, this is 100, a set of 100 high resolution simulation with varying neutrino mass. So on the right hand side plot, uh, I am showing uh, the parameter space of all the simulations. There are 100 um, black dots on this plot and each of them has a different uh, parameter sets that varies AS, the primordial clustering ampl amplitude, omega m and the neutrino mass. So for each uh, black dots, we have one high resolution simulation and uh, together with uh, particle data, halo catalog, merger tree, weak lensing and CMD lensing maps. Most of them are public available through a website here, columbialensing.org. So usually uh, we like to constrain cosmology using the power spectrum. It is sensitive to many parameters that are, we're interested in including dark matter, dark energy and the neutrinos. However, one issue with the power spectrum is that it is only complete for Gaussian fields. Our universe is highly nonlinear. For example, here I am showing uh, six maps. They all have the same power spectrum. And uh, this is um, projected over density or weak lensing maps. The red points are over dense regions and the blue points are under dense regions. If you only spend three seconds on these maps, you can already tell that map four is very different. So all other five maps are Gaussian random fields, while map four is from numerical simulation, or you can consider it as um, closer to the reality of our universe. If we only look at the power spectrum of all these maps, they look almost the same. But if we change a method, the method to look at them, for example, uh, a histogram of all the pixels or the P PDF of, um, of the map, you can see that all five Gaussian maps, they are very Gaussian looking. And map four, the non-Gaussian map from simulation is uh, skewed with a high kappa tail. So indeed, there's a lot of information beyond the power spectrum. So the next question is, how do we extract all this information from the maps we observe? So one, um, one way is through the bispectrum. So instead of looking at uh, the matter clustering as a function of distance, we can also look at matter clustering as a function of triangle shapes. So imagining putting triangles uh, on the sky and look at each side of this triangle and each angle of this triangle and then ask how likely do we find uh, over, dense, over density at those places. So you have triangles of different shape. They carry different information. Here I'm showing you two examples. One is equilateral shape, another is squeezed uh, shape. So both of them are sensitive to uh, the evolution of structural growth from redshift one and the redshift two. And they are also sensitive to neutrino mass. I'm showing you zero neutrino mass and 0.1 EV. And on the bottom panel is the suppression on the bispectrum due to massive neutrinos. It is about 10% level for 0.1 EV neutrino. If we translate this signature to um, the cosmological constraints, um, we get this contour. This is work led by Will Colton and uh, we're showing a uh, parameter constraint in the omega m and the neutrino mass contour. The power spectrum will give us this black contour, by spectrum give us the blue contour. On, on its own, by spectrum is uh, very similar in constraining power than the power spectrum. But because they have different direction of degeneracy, when you combine them, you get this red joint con constraint, which is 30% tighter uh, when 30% uh, tighter than the power spectrum alone. In this plot, we assume LSST like noise and the weak lensing only. 
We also want to be able to include information beyond the third order. And we want to have some summary statistic that potentially can be simple and powerful. One promising statistic is called peak counts. So the idea of peak counts is to scan through every single pixel in our map and uh, identify the ones with higher value than its surrounding pixels. It is a very promising tool because uh, through past work, we realized these lensing peaks, uh, peaks are related to over dense regions uh, like clusters of galaxies or uh, over dense regions in our universe. And those regions are uh, where neutrino effects are the strongest. So peak counts has been applied to many different weak lensing surveys, including CFHC lens and DES and the KIT survey and many others. So in all the works independent done by different groups, uh, everyone find the very similar result that peak counts gives uh, competitive result compared to the matter power spec, uh, the lensing power spectrum. So we have done the forecast of peak counts uh, to constrain neutrino mass for LSST. This is work led by Zach Lee. And we again show the contour for omega m and neutrino mass. So peak counts on its own is already um, more constraining than the power spectrum due to, it, due to the fact that it contains information from all order of um, in the lensing field. Therefore, when you join peaks and the power spectrum, you get a combined constraint that's very similar to the peaks alone. So we find that using peak counts, we can potentially improve the constraint on neutrino mass with LSST weak lensing by 40%. I want to talk about um, cosmic voids so this is also work um, done using massive news. And now instead of looking at the over dense regions, we look at the under dense region. They're interesting because the size of typical voids are comparable to the free streaming scale of neutrinos, um, which is typically 100 megaparsec. Voids, they can have different size varying from a few megaparsec to tens of few tens of megaparsec. With Christina Kreisch, we looked into uh, the impact of neutrinos on void size function. So on the X axis, they are voids of different size, small voids and the large voids. On the Y axis, uh, it is the void count. We found that when we vary neutrino masses, we see less large voids and more smaller voids. And recently, we combined uh, void statistic and the matter clustering together with halo counts to um, constrain neutrino mass. So this is work led by Adrian Bayer and using a uh, Quixote simulation, not massive news. Um, so what we found is that matter clustering on its own is still more powerful than the two other statistic. However, in the parameter space of schema eight and the neutrino mass, voids and the halo counts, they have very different uh, parameter degeneracy. And when you combine the three statistics together, you can potentially get a very small contour. This is um, based on very simple facial analysis and uh, do not include realistic uh, observational systematics. So in order to realize the potential of non-Gaussian statistics such as halo counts and voids, we really need to model things um, more carefully and uh, implement more realistic observ observational systematics. One point I want to mention is back to two-point analysis only. In the future, um, in order to discover neutrino mass, we have to combine multiple cosmological tools. Here is a forecast for the next generation uh, surveys. 
if we use CMBS4 only, we get this uh, gray contour. If we use LSST uh, Galaxy, you can get this pink contour. If you use LSST weak lensing, you get this blue contour. And then combine LSST, you have the green contour, which is improvement on dark energy, but it's still not good enough for neutrino masses. Only if you combine CMB and uh, LSST, you get this very tight orange contour that will eventually give us uh, discovery if neutrino mass will be at the minimum mass. Luckily, in the next decade, we're seeing many uh, large cosmological surveys, including both galaxy and the CMB surveys, such as Vera Rubin Observatory, LSST, Euclid, SphereX, and the Roman Space Telescope on the galaxy side, Simons Observatory, Lightbird, CMBS4 on the CMB side. To summarize, massive neutrinos have high potential to lead to yet another breakthrough in physics in the next decade. However, accurate modeling of nonlinear scales is the key for a significant improvement from cosmology. Finally, joint analysis is the only way to reach discovery. And I thank you for your attention. If you have more questions or if you would like to uh, use the simulation or, or if you would like to collaborate, I welcome all contact. You can find my email here.